Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Lights in 2020 where I'm going to take a second look at the DC Designs F15 after it's been updated. Uh, this is version 0.2.0. .0. So presumably there's going to be further updates because there is version 1 somewhere in the future. Uh, so yeah, one thing I can say, I've already tried it out briefly, is that it goes faster. Uh, otherwise I wouldn't even be bothering at this point. Uh, so we're going to take a look at that and what else might be improved. One other thing that's improved is that uh, it's showing the D version and I version. Previously it was only showing the C version and E version here. And uh, the say cruise speed is 750 knots indicated. Uh, sorry, a true airspeed, not true airspeed. And I've got full fuel and I'm fairly light. Uh, and I have not got any weapons. So we are ferry mode which is mainly how I want to do it. And we are, I mean, my intention was to fly this thing around the world because it is a good touring fighter. Some Somebody said it's meant for shooting things you should be playing in DCS World. Well, I have DCS World. I've flown the F-15 in DCS World just fine. But it is a good touring plane because it's fast, obviously, for the large bodies of water, you like that. Um, or any, you know, the Sahara Desert, whatever. And, um, of course, it has long range. Uh, it was showing 2,000 nautical miles. I'm flying from uh, Vandenberg to Ellington Air Base. That's 1,400. I intend to sightsee a little bit, so we'll be dipping down and we won't be getting full efficiency. So we'll see how it works out. If I have to uh, land at Santa Fe or something, then I'll do that. But we'll be pushing it and seeing how it goes. But, yeah. And it's also fairly solid. In other words, it's not very twitchy, so that after a long flight, uh, when you're landing, you're not going to... Be, uh, the F-16, especially in DCS World, I tend to sort of Transfer tip it around a little bit. Delta oh, Charlie this is Alpha not the Bravo time I was looking for. Yeah, sometimes after a while, the F-16, I land a little bit sloppily. That's not going to be as much of a problem with the F-15. It's, it tends to be very solid on approach and landing, so that helps. So uh, just taking a look again at the situation, I think the forward portion here is a little bit cleaner. Uh, I thought it was looking a little bit weirder before. Overall, uh, you can see the textures now. There's a little bit of wear and tear on the panels. I don't... It, it feels a little bit better. I don't know for sure, though. I'll have to take a look at my previous video. I have flown other planes since. and uh, But you can take a look at that video, too. And taking a look outside, this is how it is. And we'll get better uh, shots later in the video. Oh, I happened to pick a California livery, though... Uh, uh, we are not in Fresno, we are in Vandenberg. And here we go, throttle up, and brakes off. Uh, HUD's visibility is a little bit worse suddenly. I think that's the way the game displays text though. I'm not on Afterburner. Boo! It's that squirreliness that on the F-16 is rough. Okay, gear up, flaps up. Ooh, nice view. So we're not on afterburner. It's still accelerating pretty vigorously. So here we are at Vandenberg, turning eastward along our intended track. So I'm just gonna go up a little bit before trying to break the sound barrier. Which obviously we want to do. And yeah, uh, from this default setting, I can see the numbers fairly clearly. But when I turn, they go fuzzy. And at that angle. But again, I think that must be something intrinsic with the game or something. I've seen that before in other planes as well with uh, digital readouts during movement. The autopilot is a little bit confusing to me because it's not like... Oh, from the wow, we're going really fast. I haven't got Afterburner on. We're past Mach 1 now, aren't we? Uh, yeah, we're at Mach 1.3. So, again, that works. Um, though... 
I would expect to... Wow, okay, 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 let's hold off on that. I would have expected to need to use Afterburner, especially since we're carrying the external... Now, that's another fault with the game. Um, they, they don't... I don't think they put drag on these external stores, so... Um, those are physically probably meaningless, except for their weight. There's the Afterburner. It's got a shimmy here. So the game itself has to improve the supersonic handling. They're planning on that. One other thing I've noticed that hasn't been changed is the fuel flow indicator still doesn't do anything. I'm gonna idle the engine. And the RPM gauge is fine, but the fuel flow indicator is meaningless. Uh, the nozzle position is also just a dummy. Uh, so is the temp, I think. Yeah. As far as playing long trips go, I, I don't I don't know if we're there yet. I think that terrain there is probably gonna fix itself. Yeah, so the all pilot layout it seems is um, there are indicator lights on the right. And so if I put altitude hold, it's a that flick activates the altitude hold and then you can flick it again and it'll release the altitude hold. Um I don't know what it's going to do for altitude. Let's engage the autopilot master. So now we've got the autopilot switch and the altitude hold thing. And... Okay, well it's doing something. It doesn't seem to be holding the altitude at all. Right now. Might be holding the vertical speed. Uh, maybe I can't toggle this as an altitude setting that 200 there I don't see maybe the numbers here but it doesn't start at one so the five six seven eight nine zero not uh, so I can't really type it in I don't think the knobs on this that might be used to set a heading for the autopilot don't work so if I uh, Click heading. I'm just curious what it'll do. Maybe it'll follow the pre-planned track. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna take it off of altitude hold because we're losing too much of that. I don't think it's following pre-planned track because we weren't going straight north at all. It's still uh, countering my trim, even though I uh, turned off the. So the flight director is countering my trim right now. I think I'm just going to have to turn off autopilot. Okay, well, let's hit Edwards and continue on our track like this. So I'm going to have to use the VFR map in order to navigate. Perhaps we should, in the spirit of Edwards Air Force Base, try to push it to its limits. It said 60,000 feet, but where are we going? Where are we going to end up? We're at Mach 1.6. So, Edwards Air Force Base from 61,000 feet. And let's hit the afterburner and see. Is there any benefit to the bloody afterburner at all? That's off of afterburner. We're going up but not accelerating. Not really. Well, we're going up faster. We got that going for us. I guess we'll keep it on. I don't know what the fuel consumption on afterburners like right now. Mach 1.7. There's some interesting effects going on here. I get the strange feeling that the uh, game devs did not expect us to go this high. <laughs> Maybe. Well, we're having a little bit more trouble trying to... Let me just sort of pull up hard and see what happens. I can't really pull up very hard. It's, uh, well, it's, yeah, it's it's not happy with that at all. So, okay, we're reaching some limit. It doesn't seem by the indicated airspeed that we should be at the limit of the plane at all. But, it's, uh, ooh, ooh. It's definitely unhappy with the situation. I mean, we're using a lot of trim already. 
So at this site taking a look at the model of everything in the background. This is as close as I can zoom in, uh, at least with my mouse scroll wheel. Possibly uh, there's, there's uh, like a drone camera view that might be able to get closer. It's got a sort of sad face, doesn't it? Definitely sort of a sad face when you look head on to it. It seems like the game probably doesn't have the sort of afterburn effect. In other words, the fuel consumption is continuous anyway. So... And therefore the thrust gradient as you increase the thrust is continuous as well. Probably that's what's going on. So it's not going to have the either the proper fuel consumption or the sort of bang for your buck that afterburner gives you. So we're at Mach 2 and the ground speed is uh, 1140 knots. Well, true airspeed I should say. True airspeed is 1100. It's taking out the 1000 because there's not enough digits in the game uh, to display that, which is always funny. Again, a case where they did not expect planes to be going this fast. At this height, the scenery is holding up very well, so it's doable. It's certainly doable, and this will be a hike for the Concorde as well. Um, without without the autopilot doing stuff, and right now I don't have much confidence in the autopilot. Um, it's hard in a supersonic plane to trim it out and get it stable like that and to some extent we don't want it stable we're approaching Las Vegas right there so I'm gonna do drastic things we've hit Mach 2 and everything so we got that on the on the testing checklist I really the drone camera we, this this camera doesn't pan so wow it's it's plunging Got to make sure it can come out of a plunge. It's shimmying a bit. And air brake. Well, air brake is effective. So we got to see if the scenery can take this sort of deal. We don't see any of the tall buildings yet. We'll, we'll uh, note when we start seeing the more prominent buildings. Oh, we see some over there. That's the strip. Okay. Okay, it's a little bit laggier as it's trying to get the buildings in. So you can see uh, the performance the game is getting. I'm recording, but it doesn't seem like anything's being taxed, actually. Um, neither my CPU nor my GPU is being maxed out. Memory's fine. Um, disk read is fine. So uh, the game is using whatever it wants to use. Okay, let's go into the cockpit, and I'm going to go fast, or try to go fast anyway. This isn't the road I want. There's a road. Yeah. Uh, can't quite go as low as I'd like because of the frame rate. I'm going at almost 500 knots indicated. There's that pyramid thing. I forgot what uh, casino that's associated with. Maybe it'll come back around. High G turn. 7 G's there. MGM Grand looks like there. But we're going a little bit slower now after the turn. Mm. Buzz the tower. <laughs> okay, but yeah, yeah, the game is clearly not thrilled with this. 
It's using about 50% of my CPU. Only about 70% of my CPU is being used in total. The other is OBS mainly. I think if we hung out a little bit more and did a few more passes, performance would improve. But okay. We're gonna go over to the Grand Canyon now. I'm really yanking this thing. Yeah. Performance isn't great right now. Of course, the photogrammetry areas are always pretty intense. We're down at 74%. We'll see how much our fuel gets us. I don't think I can get under that bridge with this. Uh, not, not from this angle. I don't know. I don't want to mess up this flight, though. Eh, I can't do it. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. Uh, let's see. Uh, I, I sort of missed... Uh, well, you got the top of the Hoover Dam, anyway. There you go. Hoover Dam from this direction. There's a lot of the Grand Canyon. This is only a little bit. It's gonna have trouble loading the mesh quickly enough. Yeah, it's a bit awkward, the game, when it comes to something flying 700 knots in the Grand Canyon. Can't totally blame it. There's no flight simulator that's done this particularly well, you know. A plane going past Mach 1 down the Grand Canyon. With all the details it has to load. The cliff faces are not as bad as in previous flight sims, you know. There's always the streaky business, you get some of it going on, but it's not, not as bad. The water levels... Updating the water levels is a little bit tricky. The cockpit view is, of course, a different experience. Um, so we can... It's actually easier in cockpit view, especially if I had the track IR on. Because the field of view is narrowed to where we really need it to be. We will forego the full Grand Canyon experience and get up out of here. Oh, let's turn on the afterburner. We don't need to go too high up though. I just wanted to give a view of things. Because we're going to be wanting to take a look at the uh, further sites, Navajo Bridge and so forth. Oh, uh, flying through the clouds is actually quite nice. Oh, that's quite a landscape. Oh, uh, it's that bridge, I bet. So, site number one, this Navajo Bridge. That is. I guess that's what it is. And next up, Monument Valley. That's the view behind us. Oh, there's a dam. I don't know which one this is. By the way, I will say that the plane does not necessarily want to do everything I want it to do all the time. I mean, it does sort of complain a bit like a plane ought to. This is really a fancy landscape though. Talk about meshes. This is a heck of a mesh right here. That's a unique thing. That's a, that's a lot of detail in terms of the height map there. Ooh, I guess this Monument Valley up ahead. I mean, this area from the Grand Canyon on into Utah is probably the most satisfying 
area to fly around. They sort of stick out in a way, but maybe they're like that. I haven't been there myself. I've seen pictures. I feel like it's not like properly integrated into the landscape, but maybe that's just how it is. Maybe that, maybe one of them is the rate altimeter. There's uh, one in 300s that's sort of really big. Yeah, I think that must be it. So, uh, I'll try and use my cursor. There's the uh, altitude. I know it's fuzzy. Yeah, it's fuzzy for me too. Um, so, there's the altitude, there's the feet per minute, the rate. And then this number here is the radar altimeter. I don't know why it's placed like that, but... Well, I'll do. I'm pretty slow though, let's go faster. Oh, it really wants to go up when I've got the throttle up. Going past 700 indicated airspeed. 734. Well, again, away from buildings, the sim is handling this business pretty well. Skimming the ground like this. Could he's, I mean, could probably get lower if I wanted to risk it, but I do want to get to Ellington. <laughs> well, Cliff Palace is, I don't know how easy it's going to be to spot. That I haven't seen before, so, even in pictures. I might need a slower plane. I, I, I don't feel like I'm passing right by it. It's supposed to be a point of interest. I don't know. Maybe I, I just didn't know what to expect. Maybe that's it. Really, uh, in most planes, flying that low while running the engines that high is would kill our fuel situation. So, I don't know what's up in flight sim, but... Mach 1.9 seems good, but I have an urge to push it to its maximum speed, so I'm gonna go full throttle for a bit. See what we can do. 1,300... Oh, the one is actually there, it's just covered by the S of the true airspeed, I didn't see that properly. Uh, 1,370 knots to rear speed. Mach 2.5. Mach 2.7. Though the Mach limit might be a structural limit kind of thing. The indicated airspeed is used to a certain point, like 18,000 feet, and then after that it's by Mach number. So, probably we're just playing over speed at that point. Past Mach 2.7, Mach 2. Point, I mean, past Mach 2.5, Mach 2.8 now. We're we're getting up to SR 71 levels here. Oh, but we're going down. That's cheating. Well, that's what the landscape looks when you're going this fast at this altitude. Still, it's holding up pretty well. It's holding up pretty well. The sim, I mean. Mach 3, just briefly there. On a climb, too. Some of the drag that a plane experiences during supersonic flight aren't in yet, either. Um, there's much more drag past the super, uh, transonic region and so forth. I think we'll just back off now. So, if you give a plane the proper amount of thrust, it's gonna overperform because the game isn't applying the right amount of drag to it past Mach uh, 0.9-ish. And again, mostly planes can go faster. It's just that they're not structurally meant to go faster. So yeah, taking a look at the fixes, there are a number of things. Obviously, we know about the speed. There was a uh, gear handle lever issue, uh, texture fallback issue, which was probably causing some of the 
textures to look icky. Some people noted that. I, I... No. That reflection issue is probably something else, though. I think, again, we're at altitudes that the sim just isn't very good at doing stuff at. LOD models appearing at the wrong time or too early, it says, as far as bug fixes. Which, again, would cause problems for how the thing looked. And... But uh, one thing that they noted they could not fix because it's a game limitation is the is the HUD the HUD is a projected display and it's a anti-aliasing thing that's just a factor in the game so and the MFDs of course do not work to the proper extent we can't even click these right now I don't know why the HSI at least isn't available. I mean, I understand that the radar is not available. That's fine, but the the HUD duplicate would be really handy. You know, just having the HUD down here. That's the HUD there, so having that display there would help, so that we could read that stuff if we if the anti-aliasing is causing a problem for us. Uh, I don't know. I wonder how much of the fuel is unusable fuel. Well, I guess we're gonna find out. It's not unusual for me to cut the margins pretty thin, which is why I really like the fuel flow gauge to be working, <laughs> you know. But I could probably figure it out by just looking at the fuel ticking down on the digital display there. Though it's it's still got a sort of difficulty to read issue. Yeah. I can't zoom in any more than this right now. Uh, yeah, I mean the last two digits they get a little bit fuzzy when they're changing. We're way bingo fuel. Only 1,400 pounds left, it says. It seems like two pounds per second. Okay, 765, 764, 763, so one per second now that I throw down. I don't know, is Houston a photogrammetry area as well? If so, we can expect some lag, probably. I think I can see Ellington. You can certainly see the city center. I don't know, performance seems pretty fluid right now. Eh, okay, maybe a bit choppy, but still. No, there's, there's some photo textures on some of those things. Maybe it's photogrammetry. Yep, not bad overall. Definitely photogrammetry there. Jeez, just uh, we're not going that fast. Just saying photogrammetry causes lag, I think. Okay, I'm gonna need to go back into the cockpit anyway. Hopefully Ellington itself is not so bad. Okay, gear down. I better check on that though. Uh, a little bit flaps. Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay. Sounded pretty soft, kind of. Okay, I didn't even use the spoiler. Oop, 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 oop. And so, successful journey. So, to some extent, it's conducive to my needs, but 
again, we're going to have to wait for a uh, game update for any sort of supersonic realism and especially supersonic drag realism. So that is the situation. As far as textures go, well, you, you could see for yourself. I'm not going to try and decide what the threshold is for what is acceptable on that one. Um, Handling-wise, uh, it's it's okay. I mean, it's again. There's improvements that will need to be made, and they say uh, 0 0.20. So take that for what it is. And, well, it seems fun at this point. So the question is whether you think it is sufficiently fun, and I'll leave that to you. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.